it's VCR time. Today I have a Fisher FVH 4901. It's a forehead, dual azimuth, hi-fi. I have the original remote. I believe this is from around 1992, 91, 92. It's a rebranded Sanyo. Sanyo made uh, the Fisher VCRs of this era and if you look up some Sanyo models from this time the layout of the switches and everything's pretty similar and uh, this one I was using for a while has great sound quality I, I don't know if Fisher does anything different or if they added anything different to the EQ or audio processing but to my ear Maybe it's just nothing, but it does sound better than uh, JVC and Sony models I've compared it to. So anyway, uh, this one's got two issues. Uh, the first issue is when you first power it on, it will reject any tape you load in. You can hear the loading belt will slip once the tape goes in and uh, it'll just reject it. After a while, it'll start to load it. The belt is pretty worn, so I'm going to replace it. I don't know if there's an additional problem, maybe like the, it's like the position switch on the bottom of the assembly we can take a look at. Uh, second issue, the pinch roller is completely worn out. I mean, it is shiny, shiny smooth. I tried cleaning and scrubbing it. Um, I don't think it's really a candidate for rubber renew. From my understanding, even on less worn out pinch roller, is that sort of a temporary fix? And this one's in pretty bad shape. So I'm going to be replacing both the pinch roller and the loading belt. So we can take a look inside this. Uh, I'm going to power it on and we'll see. It's it, I haven't powered it on in a couple of weeks. Let's see if it'll take a tape right away or if it uh, rejects it. I've plugged it in. You can see the dim uh, front display. It At first I thought it might even be a power supply issue because once it warms up it seems to be working well. That still could be a possibility. I don't really see any other signs of a power supply issue, noise or anything. So let's, let's see. They never fail when I have the camera out. Never. Let's give a demonstration then. So the only buttons outside of this door are play and stop on the right hand side and eject and power on the left hand side. Underneath the door you've got the front video and audio input you can select between the front and rear AV. You can select your tuner mode, mono stereo or second audio program. Rewind, fast forward, pause, record, tracking control. Uh, this goes between uh, the tuner and the input. And then that switch would switch between front and rear. Your uh, channel control for tuner, full cable tuner. You can switch between cable and uh, broadcast or VHF UHF. So now let's hit play. So here's the inside. Got a good uh, substantial size to it as well. This is a full, full depth and a full 17 inch wide uh, front to it. There's a power supply. Given the size of that transformer, I'm going to guess a linear power supply. Won't really see much with the head spinning there, but it is forehead hi fi with the uh, dual azimuth with the heads together for video. And right in there, that is the belt, the loading belt. 
that is loose. Let's try ejecting this. And we'll try putting the tape in. So you can see how the belt is sitting like that. It's pretty loose in there. If I can go and Yeah, oh, wow. Okay, there really isn't much left there. I want to demonstrate, i got this tape here. It's near the end. I pulled the uh, protective flap off the front so we can see this. So play is perfectly fine. Stays nice and loaded if I hit fast forward scan same thing this is pulling on this side this uh, take up reel now if I start going the other direction this is spinning against the pinch roller and this is t pulling take up all the way through here and I think that has to do with why if you have a slippery pinch roller it absolutely annihilates your poor, poor tape. So I believe to remove the pinch roller, you have to get it a screw underneath here. So there's a C-clip here and this spring. So if you undo this spring and the C-clip, the whole assembly should lift out and then we should be able to replace it. All right, I think I was wrong. If you look on the back side of this, there's just a press fit shaft. So I believe this just pops up this little blue cap. Let's see with the screwdriver. Yep. That should just come out. And there we go. And if I compare that to the new replacement here, it's a bit of a difference in terms of the rubber. This one is very, very soft, and this one is just squeaky hard. They look the same, the bearing looks the same. So let's see. I think that's it. Let's put this piece back in the VCR and try it out. Okay. So, let's see if I remember how I removed this all but a few seconds ago. That needs to come in here, slide down like that. There we go. That's where it sits. And now there's a little spring that these spring hook tools are very, very useful. Although I don't really need it to get this started.
C-clip back on like so and I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a cleaning and we'll pop a tape in This tape is pretty chewed, so let me rewind a little bit to a spot that hasn't been destroyed by my previous efforts. Seamless. Absolutely seamless. So next, let's get in and replace that belt. They really don't make this easy. So I've popped the circuit board out. It's about five screws for that. And it looks like I'm going to have to remove this top plate. And then I think I can just pull the motor up and get the belt on, pull this one off and get the new belt on, and I might be able to hook it over that. So here's the top plate. This gear has a little section there. Let's get focus. Focus. And that clips on to the end of the motor. So now I should be able to pull this belt out. Holy hell, they do not make this easy. This plastic shroud here, if you can see in there, completely butts right up against that reel. So this has to come up and out. And I've kept track of and marked where everything goes on these gears. Hopefully, hopefully I can get it all back in timed when I put it back together. In progress, that little white plastic isn't actually part of this shroud. It's a mechanism and it moves forward and back when a tape goes in. So what I've done is I've unplugged it as soon as it moved forward before it can move backwards. Now I'm gonna pop this apart, see if I can take this belt off. Because otherwise, I think you'd have to take this entire freaking thing apart and I'm not willing to do that. There's a little metal washer that's on top of here so it's just being held on by a little bit of grease right now so make sure you don't lose that and this gear be careful you don't lose the timing. Uh, if you do I believe this triangle on the little gear if the tape is the, the Tape isn't loaded, so the tray is completely out. I believe, see that line on that tooth? On the gear right, let's see if I have a finger in. Right here, that little line lines up with that triangle. And then this circle on this upper gear lines up with the circle on this gear. A little circular hole. The other thing is there is a spring-loaded um, lever that goes through this, so you're going to have to pull it out to pop this gear back on. The new belt's in, and that was a pain. 
It's especially annoying because if you see all that grease, there's a little tiny space between that metal um, piece, the thing that slides back and forth, and the end of that plastic one. You know, words for parts. Anyway, you have to jam it in there. So this is at least a three-handed job. So you have to jam it in, hold it onto that gear, and then hook it around. Took a couple tries. And then afterwards, run this through and wipe off all the grease that you now got on your new belt. Now, I'll need to put this back together. Okay, I believe I have this lined up. Hole to hole, and if you kind of look underneath there, uh, arrow to line, the uh, transports fully out, the uh, cassette loaders fully out, uh, there's a little rubber gasket or whatever tire that goes here against the uh, against this cog and uh, this little washer I've put in place. So I'm going to put this cover back and let's see if it loads a tape. All right, everything's back in. Moment of truth. First power on. Let's pop Mr. Nasty tape in. I think when I was putting this back in, I was slipping this gear a little bit out while I was trying to line the teeth up to the motor for that spiral gear. So, let's see. Okay, moment of truth. Try one more tape. I have an exact break in the fall. Good, 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 good. What I ended up doing to line this up is I, with this um, spiral gear out, loaded the tape in, which triggered the motor to spin and start loading the tape up. And once the tape was loaded, I put slight tension pushing the tape down so it's held in place properly, and then popped this gear in. And I popped it in, that little arm that it pushes in and out, I pushed it so that that arm was was sitting in the gear because that's a known position when it gets to the very end and that arm locks and pulls this little metal thing along. So that was the only way I was able to get this lined up. 
for whatever reason, when I was trying to line up those holes, in fact, let's, let's see what those holes look like when I eject. See, those look fine. So I think when I was putting this in, I wasn't tensioning that arm properly. It was something to do with that, that arm controlling the lever there that was a problem. But I think it's just time to put it back together and test out all the features. Interesting observation. I'm putting all the screws back. And this looks like a spot where you would mount a screw. But as far as I can tell, there are no markings on the plastic. This never got a screw from the factory. Oh, that's some quality control fail right there, Sanyo. It's back together. And hooked up to the little screen. So what do we have here? We've got channel controls. We'll use those in a bit. TV monitor. Doesn't seem to do anything, although I have that on the AV output. I'll have to play around with that. You have channel control, if you want to punch in channel 100 or higher. Uh, program. So program brings us to the clock setting. Clock, timer, program, check clear. And clear goes with that. QTR. Quick touch record. Set your on time and off time. Auto tracking. This is probably for the. Uh, yep, yeah, there's the M for memory. This is for your counter. Blank search. Well, that's kind of interesting. So let's rewind. I think there is something on this tape. Let's see if I. Yep, yeah, there we go. So there's something. So if I hit blank search, to end. Nice. Okay. So that's useful if you want to just record something at the end of your tape. Uh, do, do your standard play controls, tape speed, SP, LP, EP. I always thought that if you used SLP, it was a lot easier on a display because you can use the existing letters. Input, same control as on the front, AV or channel. Manual tracking controls. Uh, this will probably adjust the slow speed. And then you have TV controls. Oh, an index. Does this actually support index? Index. Nice. So I have no idea how to use that, but you can put an index marking on the tape. So uh, when I press that, it either says you can either create an index or you can go to and then you can enter, I guess, whatever index number you've put on there. I think when I hit index, okay, so ID, let's punch in five, eight. Do I just hit it again? Hmm. I'll have to play with that. Let's try, so there's channel scan. I'm gonna set this to um, broadcast because I do have some broadcast. I hooked up my internal uh, cable system. Channel scan. Looks like it's going through it. I've got the display. Ooh, that's going to take a while. I wonder what the difference between channel scan and auto program. Oh, I just went past my Simpsons channel.
So I'm going to come back to it when it's done this scan and let's see what that gives us. And I have no idea what the point of that was because we're right back where we started. Didn't add, delete any channels. It literally just scanned through the channels. If you just want to sit and just watch it channel change until you see something you like, I, I guess that's the feature. So I'm just going to auto program this because that was stupid. Yeah, that's going a lot faster. I think that was you just sort of preview channels and then when you see something you like, I guess you hit stop or channel up or something. All right, we're done scanning. Oh, I picked up 15, I guess, is the edge of the channel. So really there's only two channels that are analog. One, Simpsons, and Security. So let's try recording. Uh, so first let's try EP. Alright, so I recorded a couple minutes. Of course the sound is going to be good, it's on hi-fi. And there's a the little artifact of no flying erase head, you can see the color peeling down for a second. Fast forward. Oh, there's SP. There's LP. Of course, it's really hard to tell the uh, picture quality on that tiny TV. I'll, I'll record some footage and uh, put this directly to the capture device. But this thing does an excellent, excellent job. I'm really happy to have this fully up and running. This is definitely a keeper for me. I know I've heard some complaints about the uh, idler mechanisms in these Sanyos, but this one seems to work just fine. Here's what this belt looks like. Let's see if I can stretch it out. Just look at how it lazily goes back. It's really spongy. Ugh. It almost feels like it'll come off on my hands. It's not, but I mean, it just, this has no life left. And the new belt, I didn't think the new belt would fit. I, I ordered based on um, the parts website recommending the correct size. I didn't verify this. And when I went to go grab the new belt, it's about two-thirds the size of this one. And I was worried it would be too small or, or not fit. And it's just this thing is so stretched out. Just, yeah. Here's what it looks like underneath. This belt's in good shape. That one didn't need a replacement. Thankfully, because I could not find this exact size anyway, even if I wanted to, I'd probably have to undersize or oversize. positive presence in the community. We come to work each day with the goal of telling stories that will not only keep you informed, but will also keep you safe. Global News, weekday mornings and every evening at 6 and 10 p.m. Our roots might be simple, but our methods are far from it. As the world changed, we made a pledge to not follow to make the health of our herd, the quality of our milk, and the sustainability of our practices a core part of what we do. That's Dairy Farming Forward. That's what this symbol stands for. Dairy Farmers of Canada. When a bad cold puts the fun on hold, try Ricola's Extra Strength. Menthol from real mint that grows, helps your throat and nose feel the cool air flow. 